So hello, I'm Hannah Absalom. And I'm Alex Absalom. And today we're doing just a quick vid called Spiritual Warfare 101. And to start with, here is a verse from Ephesians chapter 6, which says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. So God is at war and because we... Uh, hopefully are aligned with him we are at war too we're not just sitting back sort of cheering him on he drafts us into his army and yeah there is no sitting on the sidelines we are at war with the lord uh, on the lord's path not with yes. on his yes. not yes, yes with him uh get that correct uh starting point also for spiritual warfare is understanding that god is greater he's mm. far bigger far more powerful far more capable than the enemy uh, sometimes you get this internet meme of like Jesus and the devil arm wrestling, which is complete heretical mm -hmm. nonsense. It's not like that at all. It's not yin and yang. Uh, God is far, far bigger and stronger. But the enemy does try try to resist us. He is pushing actively against us. He try, prowls around seeking to devour mm. us. He is doesn't fight fairly. Mm. So whether it's with us, whether it's our children, different situations, mm. you know, it's being aware of his tactics without over focusing on him. Mm -hmm. uh, three quick things about God that are not true of Satan. So Satan is not omniscient, so he doesn't know all things. So for instance, he doesn't know what's what you're thinking unless it's a tempting thought which he's placed there already. He might be able to, he's very clever, so he can deduce things mm -hmm. possibly from watching you. He doesn't know what you're thinking. Secondly, he's not omnipotent, uh, so he doesn't have all power. And thirdly, he's not omnipresent. He can only be in one place at one mm -hmm. time. So he's way, way smaller and weaker and less impactful than God. And it's quite a helpful thing to remember that because sometimes we get so overwhelmed, but he is not those three. And particularly, you know, when rebuking him or speaking to him, therefore we have to speak out loud because he can't use our thoughts. Yes, very good. Uh, the cross is the center piece, the center of the battleground that is spiritual warfare. So we read, for instance, in Colossians 2.15, this is about Jesus. Having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them, by the cross. It's at the cross that Jesus defeated all the powers of evil. He defeats sin and death and sickness and all the things that keep us apart from God, all the things we'd love to see gone. The things that we long for in heaven uh, through what Jesus has done on the cross, we get to see those things start to break out here on earth as in heaven. And of course, ultimately, when we are fully reunited with God, we will see those things in all their fullness. And I think it's worth remembering as well when we think of spiritual warfare, it's both offensive and defensive because often we think oh i'm being attacked it's spiritual warfare the enemy's after me i've got sickness i've got all these hassles whatever it is but we need to remember that part of spiritual warfare is us being on the offensive and you know going mm -hmm. against the gates of hell or whatever um and so things like evangelism or prayer or serving in jesus name those things are offensive spiritual warfare yes and so I think what you're saying is that there's actually more the primary mode of spiritual warfare rather than just seeing ourselves always hunkering down in the bunker waiting. Uh, we're meant to be going out and advancing the kingdom. Absolutely. Again, we can't just sit and just wait for the enemy to attack us. Mm -hmm. We need to actively mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. fighting against him. And you had a good illustration. Was it a fortress? And... and a force. So the question is, are we a force or are we a fortress? Now then, we're called to be a force with Jesus as our fortress. And yes, there are times to return into his presence and to receive rest and healing and, and direction and so on, training. But we're not meant to be permanent inhabitants there. We're meant to be going out as a force to forcefully advance mm -hmm. God's kingly rule in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And so we want to sort of think more through this lens. We're, we're doing a seeding session. Is it February 6th, mm -hmm. Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Central? And uh, basically, you know, specifically spiritual warfare and kids, so children, teenagers, and how we can help them um, do the sort of the basics of spiritual warfare. Because mm -hmm. unfortunately, they're going to find themselves, mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. know, dealing with the enemy as well. Yeah, and you don't, this isn't just aimed at parents. So mm -hmm. you could be an aunt or an uncle, a grandparent, a coach, a youth leader, uh, people in your group, uh, friends, neighbours. We we all have interaction with uh, the next generation. And we all have a responsibility to equip them and to encourage mm -hmm. them, to help them to understand what's going on around Not them. Not scare them, but yeah. equip them to fight. And of course, there's, there's that great wisdom, which is if we can work out how to explain this to children, then we as adults understand it as well. So mm -hmm. wherever you are in life, you're going to find this super helpful. So we'd love you to sign up. 
to the seeding session. So along with this video, wherever you're watching, there will be a link for you to sign up. And we hope to see you Tuesday, February the 6th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Homework, next step. Homework. So I think it'd be good just to ask the Lord, okay, where is the spiritual warfare going on around me? Just I think sometimes to open your eyes, not that he necessarily calls us to engage in every fight or every battle into which we are invited, but okay, just open my eyes, Lord, where is the spiritual warfare? Or is it just stuff of life and where is it spiritual warfare? Offensive and defensive. And then maybe, Lord, is there something you need me to do in response to that? Mm, so good. Great question. Well, thanks so much for being with us and we hope you found this really useful.